Welcome to part two of the Ayamawa Circus. If you are new here, check out part one so you can figure out exactly what has been said before because it's all linked. So in this video, we are going to be peeling another layer of the onion. So let's get started. Hello everyone. Welcome to Ayamawa Circus. We are going to be diving into a world that resembles reality, but truly is just a circus. Imagine a place where everything is imaginary and the truth is in front of your eyes. Yet, you are distracted by the sideshows and spectacles that you miss what's really happening. Just like a circus. The world is filled with distractions designed to blind you from reality. Stay with me as we peel back the layers and uncover the truth behind the spectacle. Let's get started. So guys, on March 28, 2023, Ayamawa sends me a form, which is actually the Electronic System for Travel Authorization, also known as ESTA. He sends it to me on WhatsApp and indicates that basically he needs my address. Now, for those of you who have never entered the United States, you may not be familiar with this form. ESTA is the form that lets the United States government know where you're gonna be staying when you're visiting the United States. And if you're gonna be traveling to multiple locations, the address that you are supposed to fill out is the address where you will be first staying at. And in this specific case, Mawa is landing in New York City. And from Sultan, he had plans to come over Washington DC, staying over my house, so he can conveniently apply for all the required visas that he needs in order to continue his journey and create content for you guys. From around 6.50 a.m. in the morning, Ayamawa blows up my phone until around 15 past seven. But he needs my address because it's that important. He will use my address as his point of contact on that ESTA form. Basically letting the United States government know that where he will be staying is with Ivan. The same person makes a live and tells you this. So I told Ivan, here is my flight ticket. Okay, I will arrive on this date. But for you, uh, I don't think I'll meet you. He asked me, why Maro, you don't want to meet me? I told him because I, when I arrive, in, I will arrive in New York City. I will stay at at uh, uh, Sultan's place because Sultan was my friend and he used to host me. He basically has no idea that he will even be staying with Ivan. He will be leaving New York and flying to Miami to meet a girl, which, by the way, he's referring to this young Polish girl. So there's only two ways here: either Ayamawa really truly believes in his head that he was trying to fly from new york and then to miami and from there who knows where therefore lying to the united states government where he was going to be staying at when entering the country or he was planning to stay with me and he's lying to you guys in order to tarnish my name my reputation so you guys hate me and see me as this creep this stalker who just can't get enough of Ayamawa. So therefore, I have to leave my home and follow him to New York, even though he does not expect me. I have nothing to do, apparently, than follow Mawa to New York, even though he does not expect me there. Guys, this is serious. These are the kind of things that, when they go on the internet, have the potential to have you denied a visa. Instead of looking at himself and what he's doing and continues to do, he wants to blame me. Why? It's because Mawa is not responsible for anything. I am Mawa. There are two things you must know about him. He can't take no from women and he's always a victim. Anything that happens to him is not his fault. But that's the circus. It's animation. It's 
making things look a certain way for you guys. Because he seems cool on YouTube, so you feel sorry for him. Because he's funny, you have sympathy for him. Because you've been watching him for years, you feel like you know him, but you don't. Mawa, if there's one country you don't want to play with, is the United States of America. When you fill out these forms, you need to make sure that they are filled out correctly. Because if there's anything wrong, as you indicate to the United States government that you're going to Washington, D.C., and it's supposed to be your first place, and you end up in Sultan, and you're making vlogs about this, you're a very popular person. As you like to call yourself, you're a public figure. You don't think nobody in the U.S. government is watching you? You really think that you can just fill things out and then go online and lie with proof and nobody is paying attention. We have a lot to learn, brother. You have a lot to learn. And I hope that with my video and everything else that will happen thereafter, that you at least learn one or two things. Stop lying. So guys, after Ayamawa requested my address, I was super tired. And I apologize to him that, you know, I missed his calls because I was just waking up. He proceeded to let me know that, you know, he was flying back to New York and I needed to pick him up. So he sent me his plane ticket. Now, on his live, of course, Mawa claims that he didn't even expect me to come. He didn't even know I was coming. And that he told me that, you know, I wasn't going to come and see you, Ivan. That's what he says on his live. Check it out. But why would you send me your flight if you were not expecting me at the airport? Guys, at some point, you have to read between the lines. You must expect a little bit more from the YouTubers that you watch. If I go to Paris and I tell you Paris is Brussels or Amsterdam, you will kill me on the comments. If I go to China and tell you that China is Japan, you will say this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You will either stop watching me, put a thumb down on the video, unsubscribe, or do something so that your creator can be a little bit better at what he does. We can all make mistakes. But being lied to, it's not okay. It's not okay. So you must expect a little bit more from Ayamawa. So when he's making these claims to you guys, I'm asking you, read between the lines. Would you send your flight details to someone without expecting the person being at the airport? What would he send me that flight ticket for? And then they call me for my address. Why? Think about it. So guys, um, after I spoke to him, I decided that, you know, I need to make my plans to go pick him up in New York. I consider him a friend, so, you know, I made the necessary arrangements so that I can get up there. So I drove to New York with my cousin Dylan. New York is very expensive. So leaving the comfort of my home to go pick up Mawa was not an easy decision, but that's what friends do. They sacrifice, they, they make adjustments to help each other out. He's coming from Kenya, so, you know, it's easier if I get up there, we spend a couple of days in New York, create, do whatever. Which, by the way, I had a great opportunity to make some vlogs. One about DMX, I don't know if you guys like DMX, and then another about the Jewish community in New York City. So, those vlogs were made because I arrived to New York a day early. Like he has said on his own live. Can you guys believe the person who received me at the airport? Actually, he arrived one day before my flight came. And he stayed in Sultan's place where I was going to stay with his cousin who is from Cameroon. But why did I arrive a day early? Because I was confused about when Mao was actually coming. The flight information were not clear to me. So I sent him this voice message. Yeah, you sent me this already, and that's the the time and the and the day we're confused about. Are you landing on the sixteenth or are you landing on the seventeenth? From what I see, it looks like you land on the seventeenth, but Sultan is saying you land on the sixteenth. So I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm confused. So, <laughs> so, so that's what I'm asking you. So given the confusion, I thought Mawa was landing that day. 
So I told Sultan, let's go. Let's go to the airport. Because I actually did not want to spend the night in Sultan's place. Because Sultan has a one-bedroom apartment. And when Mara stays there, they share the bed. So I'm not comfortable doing that. So the couch for me and the, the floor for my cousin. That's why I made sure, instead of going the night before, I made sure to wake up early around 2 in the morning and drove to New York City. My plan was to get there around 6, so that from the time I parked my car, Sultan would come and meet me downstairs, and we would go straight to the airport. And it would be one less night on the couch, one less night on the floor for my cousin. Guys, it's not cheap to go to New York. And it's not free. You have tolls, you have gas. It's a huge sacrifice. But that's what friends do. Something that apparently Mawa doesn't have any concept of. So when I arrived, Sultan came downstairs and I realized he wasn't even dressed. He had a robe. And I said, Sultan, we're going to the airport to pick up Mawa. What are you doing? Sultan told me, I am not going to the airport until I hear directly from Mawa. And given that Mawa's schedule can change, he's not going to make any moves towards the airport until he hears directly from Mawa. Because he told me, if Mawa is going to be staying at his place, the least he can do is give him a call. So guy, you, you can imagine, guys, at this point, how can I disagree with that? If you're going to be staying at my house, the least you can do is call me. So because Sultan did not have a phone call from Mawa, he decided to not go anywhere. And he waited until he can make sure that Mawa was actually coming. So we reached out to him again, went back and forth a little bit on the text. And when I realized it was actually the next day, I was sad. Hey, bro, that looks like I'm landing on the 16th because all you have to do is um, take Kenyan time, add 13 hours and see what time it will be in New York. Because uh, I think the flight says it's 13 hours. That's all. Because, uh, or just see the time difference in Kenya and New York. I think I'm landing on the 16th. Because I could have stayed home. I have things to do. Why would I leave the comfort of my home to go bother Sultan in a one bedroom apartment in the middle of Manhattan? Why? It doesn't make any sense. I could have gone the next day. But Mawa does not understand that. He takes things for granted. He takes me for granted. That's why he's even today able to make this video and alleges all these horrible things because the only thing he has in mind is to destroy my reputation on YouTube. He wants to take me down by all means necessary. And when I fight back, some of you guys go on YouTube and say, well, you know, you're not perfect, you're not a saint. This is not a saint competition. This is about setting the record straight, and this is what I'm gonna be doing. He alleges these things, and I have to respond. Yeah, you gotta take Marwa around actually this time because I'll be very, very busy. You know, um, I'm almost graduating, I have another job, so, and I'm doing clinical um, to finish my research work. So like, I'm very, very busy. I told Mara a wrong time. He didn't even tell me before he bought a ticket. So um, I told him if he had told me, I would have planned better. But yeah, like you take, you could take him around. But if you have a, if you have a air mattress, you could bring it along if you want. You know, you talk about Mara. I also asked him how long he's going to be in New York, how long he wants to, you know, basically stay there because. If he's coming to DC, I suggested to him that I just pick him up, we stay in New York for a couple of days and come down. He's not responding to me about that. And it really sucks because it's uh, it's not easy uh, for me to plan around him not saying anything because he wants to get visas for new countries. And I suggested to him that he applies for Canada because he's never been, you know, and this is a you know a, a, the fasting season for you this is not a good time to be bothering you because i know you need to pray you need to focus you know i feel really bad coming around this time you know and uh he just you know he doesn't really respond to what i'm asking him you know how my is sometimes oh no don't feel bad about it uh, i mean if i come to dc i could probably crash at your place too so i don't think there's a problem um 
if we get an air mattress, at least at least the couch is there, the air mattress is there too, right? So I don't think it's a problem, man. Even come on high school, people crush like in a small space. I mean, I, I think like even two extra people I can manage. It's not even a problem at all. Um, we just what we gotta do is just go go out when we get the time. Just go buy you know some food stuff. That's all. But beside that, man. Because if you go to a hotel, I think it's going to be expensive. You're going to have to drive up and down. But the problem with my neighborhood is just parking, you know. But if you roam around, you can get parking. Sometimes there are parking spots um, opposite my building. It's just that you got to move it, um, I think, every Tuesday and Friday. So sometimes it takes a while before I can get parking um, over there because so many people like are trying to get that spot. But um, if you wait a while, you can get a spot. Yeah, so it's not a problem, right? So guys, as you see, this whole trip of Maui in New York City was something that I was extremely instrumental in making sure that Maui had a ride around New York and had company, you know? Because it's not easy when you just, you know, arrive like this. It's always good to have, you know, friends. So that's what I was doing. Because Sultan was extremely busy. He was, you know, preparing for exams. He, he had a lot going on. I think he works two jobs. So he counted on me to take care of Mawa in New York. And that's what I came for. I took my time. I drove up there. I spent money. And for those of you who are familiar with New York, it's not cheap. And what I get in return is Mawa saying that basically I invited myself. He completely disregards everything I've done for him. Now, I know we're no longer friends, but I think that he should be at least honest enough to recognize that I did help him. You have to surround yourself with friends who want the best for you. That's why I even took him to North Face because I was hoping that he would be selected as a North Face ambassador. Unfortunately, Mawa, as you guys know, does not understand the impact of his actions. He does not hesitate to pee in public and engage in behavior that no brands wants to be associated with. But when I saw Mawa, I always thought he could be much bigger than he is. That's why I encouraged him and I did a lot behind the back, and I did a lot behind the scene, guys to make sure that Mawa will even get bigger than he is today. But in return, what he has turned is someone who wants to attack my character and lie to you guys. So I hope with these messages, you guys at least understand what I've gone through and what I'm still going through today. Mawa uses YouTube as a tool to basically control you. Notice everybody around him is either on YouTube, therefore he's very important and if they're not on YouTube, the relationship usually does not work too long. Because, quite frankly, there's not much that Mawa has outside of the YouTube platform. And this is not a diss, this is just the cold truth. So, he's surrounded with people who are afraid of him. He's surrounded with people who can't tell him the truth because he will cut you out very quickly. With no hesitation. So, when you're trying to grow your channel... That's what you do. You bend over to the king. The king of the circus. But we'll get back into this later on. Guys, it was very challenging planning around Mawa. You know, he has these expectations, but he's not very clear. Come pick me up, but doesn't really give you the right information. I was confused about his flight. Sultan was confused. Mawa himself was confused. Who can give us the information? Only Mawa could, but he wasn't doing that. That's how I found myself in New York a day early. He expected me to be there. If you've been watching his series on YouTube, you will see how many times we vlogged together. Now, he has demonized everything. Everything we've done, he has demonized. But that's not the way it was back then, you know? He really wanted me to be there because he had a plan. Or maybe he didn't have a plan. But he knew when I'm there... If he decides to come to D.C., then we will drive down. Or if he wants to go to Miami, it's okay as well. But for the time being, we were always in Manhattan, had fun. Some of you guys maybe has watched some of those lives. It was a great time. It's unfortunate 
that he chooses to now demonize me in this fashion. Now, when it comes to Sultan, Sultan is someone that hosted us, was very kind. Sultan is someone that I really respected. I don't know, I just, most of the people I've, I get along very, very well are similar to Sultan. Being Muslim, his fear of God and the way he practices his faith is much stronger than most people. And I admire that. So I always looked at Sultan as someone that I could give extra information to. And I can trust that he would give me his best judgment. Instead, as many of you guys have seen last year, he decided to use messages for me in order to basically blackmail me and make me look like I was the you know, one at fault with the situation. Even though, as later on you will see in other videos, I was relying on him to help me out when Mawa was acting a fool in my house. Because Sultan is black like me in America, and he understands the situation, at least I thought he did, of being black in America, three black males in the house, and a young 18-year-old white girl who's being sexually harassed. What was I supposed to do? I counted on Sultan to help me out and talk to Mawa. But instead, what he chose to do is become a reactor and attack me and use my messages in a way to be deceitful and make people hate me. Then, after it was all said and done, I planned a trip to Ghana. And once he saw me with Maya, he apologized. And this is the message he sent me. But guys, once the trust is broken, that's it. That's it. I don't rely on YouTube. I realize that views are very important. At this point, Mawa said he's going to unblock him, but he lost two friends, me and Mawa, because he wanted views, because he wanted to be popular on YouTube. He was willing to use drama as a way to promote his channel, and it didn't work. So, Tan, if you're watching this, brother, I hope that whatever you're doing is working out for you. I accept your apologies, but can I, never, I can never be your friend again because I don't trust you anymore. But I appreciate you reaching out and sending me that email. But for me, it's a lesson learned. And thanks to you, I now know how double-faced people can be. So I wish you the best. And guys, we will address more on this situation on, on future videos. So when we were heading to the airport, this is what happened. So we are on our way to pick him up at the airport. We are very excited to catch up with him. So much has happened. You're not going to pick up the phone, man? Maro, wait. Wow. Maro, wait for us. <laughs> we are on the way. We are on the way to pick up the phone. But Joe, you, you should pick up the phone, man. For real. Guys, Maro is calling, man. Maro is calling. I don't want to answer yet. But he wants to check like where you are and stuff. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. <laughs> he, can't talk, he can't talk while you're driving. As you see, Sultan was not happy. Sultan was actually irritated with the situation. And he purposely did not want to answer the phone. It had nothing to do with me. When Mawa could not get a hold of Sultan, he called my phone. And I spoke to him. Before, yeah, before. Okay, well, just um, is there a door yeah, number? I have, to, I have to stay inside because of the Wi-Fi, you know. Yes, yes, yeah. No, stay inside. Once we get to uh, the airport, we give you a call. We're already there. All right, bro. So that's basically what happened. So once again, he wants to talk about red flags. Ask yourself. The red flag is actually on him. He lied to the United States government by lying about where he was going to stay. He was going to stay in Sultan's place first, which he should have used Sultan's address. These are about the rules of Esther. The point of contact that you're using on the Esther form has to correspond to the place where you actually will be staying. Number two, if you're staying in multiple locations, what you're using as a point of contact must be the first location where you're staying. Not the second or third, the first. That's what the United States government requires. So those are the two main points to remember. And this is a very serious thing because you don't want to fill out federal forms incorrectly. So keep that in mind if you ever enter the United States. Don't be like Mawa, the clown. 
So for the rest of the story, guys, he's accusing me of, uh, you know, welcoming him with my camera in my hand. He's a YouTuber. We both had our cameras in our hand. Ivan came a day before. So that's when you realize he didn't have good intentions. Hey, good to see you, man. Good, good to see you, bro. How you been? Good, bro. Are you alive? Yeah. Oh, you just recorded your girlfriend, no, man. Wow, guys, Mawa is back, I'm, man. I'm so surprised you're yeah, with your cousin here. Of course. I yeah, I'm your age. No, not yet. Yeah. We had a very lively conversation in the car that you guys are more than welcome to watch and see for yourself how everything went. I was not trying to embarrass him in any way. We were friends, I thought, and we we're creating content. Therefore, I was talking to him about the different moments that I have seen on his videos. That's all it was. It had nothing to do with attacking him or trying to get into Priya's information or anything like that. We will talk about Priya later on. Once I arrived home, I invited even I invited Sultan over my house because again we crashed his home. I mean, it was me, my cousin Mawa. It's a lot of people, you know. Yo, Sultan, we just made it home, and I wanted to say thank you again for having us over. I, um, I, I don't know how to say thank you, man. You know, you saved us a lot of money. Uh, we shot some content. We had a great time. I, um, I would love to, you know, insist in you coming down because you have a couple of days off. I think it would be amazing. Uh, please, 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 if you can, please make it down here, bro. It would be really, really good for us and, and good for you to get a little break because you've been working so hard, man. So, you know, I think uh, Mawa also would love to see you here. If you can, that would be nice, man. Just, uh, just think about it. If you can't, let's uh, make another plan another time. But uh, I just wanted to take the time and say thank you, bro, for all your help and everything you've done. All right? And I'll see you soon. Bro, it's okay, man. Don't worry about it. We're all brothers, man. We're from Africa. We got to look out for each other. So it's not even a problem. I'll try and see if I can come over, man, um, and get some time off. The only concern was because of the fasting. But if not that, I wouldn't even, you know, be thinking about or hesitating at all. So, but anyway, I'm glad you guys got there safe. I just spoke to Marwa. He said he's fine. He's trying to get some rest. I never treated Marwa like a celebrity. I always told him the truth. Maybe that's part of the reason why he didn't like me or pretended to like me because he prefers to be surrounded with people who would say, yes, you're right about everything. But I always told Mawa, no, this is not okay. Even when I was drafting a video, he would tell me, this is the thumbnail you should use in order for him to be in the front. But guys, this is my channel. I want you guys to watch me for me, not for Mawa. This is not a Mawa's channel. So we had disagreements about many things. But I always told the truth about Mawa. I think you should do this. I think you should do that. This was just my opinion. I just never was afraid to share it. I'm not a yes ma'am type of guy. And it created the problem that it created between Mawa and I. But first, let me address D. For those of you who may not know, and I think most of you guys are aware, D Mwango is I am Mawa's sister. D Mwango made the first comment on a video when I went shopping with Mawa, her brother. And she was happy to see her brother wear different gear. So me and Dee started talking. There was nothing ever sexual between myself and Dee. Nothing. And Dee, if you're watching this, I want to say thank you for all the help you have provided to me in the, over the years. And it's unfortunate that this is happening now, but I understand why you unfollowed me. Guys, Dee Mwango, even after the blow up with her brother, kept following me until I filmed with Wodemaya. That's when she unfollowed me. And I understand it's her brother. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but I was not expecting D to keep following me on YouTube after me and her brother had to fall out. It makes sense, it's all good. But I'm here to let you guys know, me and D were friends. There has never been anything sexual suggested at all. Mawa, you know what? I can actually talk to women without making them feel uncomfortable. That's why they're okay talking to me. That's why maybe you feel intimidated by me. That's why maybe you feel uneasy and think that I'm trying to steal your women. Even your own sister. This is what you are saying. So Ivan writes my sister D. I think he sent my sister some money. 
then somehow somehow my sister told me about this it was so weird so i'm like bro this guy is hitting all of my the girls i'm trying i'm i'm, I'm trying to date he's still going even after my own young sister i have never met Dee in my life we never met the reason we never collaborated is probably because we just never met it is not because you told her anything it is not because i'm a creep that is not the case that is why guys when i entered iceland two years ago d had a serious financial problem and it makes me feel sad to even divulge this information online because i believe that certain things are to be private but Mawa gives me no other choice but to talk about this. So D reached out to me. I just landed in Iceland, one of the most expensive countries I've ever visited. And she said to me that she's facing a tough situation financially. She needed to borrow some money from me. And I said, okay, how much? She said about $750. Now, keep in mind, I never met D in my life. 750 is a lot of money so to be honest with you i was very uneasy with that but i'm also say d has helped me on my youtube journey up to that point way more than her brother she's given me advice she has given me suggestions she's encouraged me she has shared my videos countless of times and for that d i want to say thank you I will never forget that. Guys, YouTube is very difficult. And when you're able to reach people like D, people like Mawa, it's a blessing for your channel. But it's a double-edged sword because when someone is trying to take things back like Mawa, then you wish that you are less subscribers than more because all he has to do is, and they're gone, which is what he tried to do to my channel. But I'm still here, Mawa, I'm still fighting. And I'm gonna keep on fighting. Long story short, Dimwango has been instrumental to my success in my very early stages on YouTube. She has taken time to talk to me, give me advice and make sure that my channel would take off. I will never forget that. So when she needed help, it was hard for me to say no. She wasn't asking for $50 or $100, she was asking for $750, that's a lot of money. When you guys are watching YouTubers and think well, YouTubers are so rich and all that, that is not the case, man. Being a full-time content creator is tough and is expensive. So don't believe what you watch. You don't. People have serious problems. That's the reason why I don't do YouTube full-time. Because I just know the waves is not something I'm willing to deal with. So being compelled and being asked to, from a friend, to borrow money, I gave D the money. And this is the transaction that you can see right here. So D told me when she borrowed the money that she will pay me back the very next month. Did I believe that? I don't know. Remember, I never met D. Even if she didn't pay me back, I took it as investment money because she was helping me so much. There was no way I was going to say no to D. Meanwhile, Pinocchio is making a live telling you guys that, no, that's not the case. I was trying to get with his sister. Guys, it's not true. It's not true at all. So as a collateral damage of my friendship ending with Mawa, my friendship has also ended with D. But I have no personal ill will towards D. And D, you know, I I hope you're doing well. I wish you the best. Nothing but respect for what you've done. And I want to say thank you again for all the help that you have provided to me. Guys, when I even got monetized, D was the first person that came to my mind. So I sent her this note. Hey D, how are you? I finally did it. I finally did it. And there's no way I would have made it this this fast without your support and your help and advice, motivation, and friendship. So I just want to take a few moments to say thank you so much. I told my sister, stay away from this guy. That's why you never see my sister doing collabs with this guy here. So needless to say, D is someone that I've always respected from afar. And it's too bad that this clown uses his perverted mind in order to make me appear to be something that I'm not. I never looked at D in a sexual way. 
never. In fact, D and I used to have very uh, personal conversation regarding men and women. In particular, men regarding her and her life, which I'm not going to open it here because this video is not about D. D has done nothing to me. I have no reason to call my D at all, and I never will. The problem is with her brother. He's the one that's accusing me. He's the one saying that somehow I sent her money. I loaned money to D. She paid me back as she said she was going to. The very next month, she wired me the funds back. You can see here. So that's what happened with D. I had friends that saw her twerk on the river and told me, Hey, Ivan, we know you talked to D. Can you hook us up? And I would tell D about that. Yes, you can see the text messages. There has never been any kind of sexual conversation between D and myself about hooking up. Contrary to the clown, I'm actually able to be friends with women. Mawa, let me give you a tip. Sometimes don't act too thirsty. Sometimes just be a friend and women will open up to you. Women will tell you more. Women will be nicer. But if you're a creep, you act too horny. You act like you don't have sense. You make women shy away from you. You make them less likely to open up to you. But you don't understand that. You can't take no for an answer. You just don't understand that no means no. And that leads me to the story of Emily. So guys, November 14, 2021 is the day I am our friendship and I was supposed to end. We had a huge fight that day. We were in Medellin, Colombia. Now, here he says I changed my flight from Ecuador to Medellin, which is correct. So when we went to Colombia, I was with Emily and my friend, my friend Aaron Dante, Ivan called. Hey boys, where are you? We said, hey, we're in Colombia chilling. Uh, look, this is, uh, this is Aaron, this is me, and this is my friend Emily. Actually, you know what happened? That guy booked a flight from Ecuador. He was in Ecuador. He booked a flight immediately and came to Colombia. Myself and Mawa spoke and he told me he was going to be flying to Medellin. Now, I'm in Quito. I've seen his videos with Aaron. Aaron seems like a cool guy. But I'm not too excited about Quito. Like, I'm not having, like, a blast. And sometimes it happens. Now, mind you, Mawa is not always in South America. You know, he travels quite a bit. So, when I was in Quito and me and him started talking, he suggested that, you know, if you can, you know, come and join us in Medellin. Hello, so we're going to stay in El Poblado area. I'll, actually, Aaron booked the place. Beautiful. But, yes, so we're going to be updating you, bro. And also, you know, I'm going to stay in Colombia for uh, a month and so. Meaning, anytime you're back, you can hit me up. So I don't know because once Aaron leaves to the US, I'll be left alone to just figure out where to stay around and about, you know. But anyway, just hit me up. Medellin is always a good time. You know, when in doubt, you go to Medellin. So that's what I decided to do. I looked at the flights and it was gonna cost me about $50 or so to change my ticket, so I did. Hey, thanks for the update. I'm looking at flights right now. Uh, I have to make a phone call to see if I can change. Yeah, keep me updated. We're waiting, man. Any results will be good results, you know? Yeah, yeah just take your time, no oh, pressure. Mawa knew I was coming there. Hey bro, you the real G. <laughs> man, tomorrow in Medellin. Man, I'll be there tomorrow, man. I couldn't let this opportunity pass me by. It's crazy. We're gonna have so, such a good time, man. I can't wait. In fact, 
We had a great dinner that night. And he had a date with a girl from Tinder. Why am I saying all of this? It's so you guys get the full picture of what actually happened with Emily, which is this, the, the theme of this second portion on this video. I'm having dinner with Mawa and Aaron, and this is the first time we meet. And later on, we are joined by a young lady that he had met online. In order to give him some privacy, myself and Aaron left, and we went drinking somewhere else. We had a great time. November 14th, though, there was a very serious soccer game between two local teams in Medellin, Colombia. So they're both local teams. So when these two teams meet, it's intense in, in, in Medellin. Very intense. So what I did, I called Mawa that morning and I told him, hey man, let's meet and go to this game. I actually booked tickets on Airbnb experience and uh, we were supposed to meet this guide and then have some drinks and then go to the stadium. So Mawa and I met and we went out to the stadium. Now, mind you, Mawa is trying to make it seem like he was already with Emily and Aaron at the time that I met up with him. And then I basically invited myself. That is that is not true. Mawa, please stop lying. Just just stop it, man. It's, it's, it's getting ridiculous. So I booked a tour. It gave us access to the game. Mawa vlogged that day. You can actually see that on his channel. Unfortunately, I'm new. So I'm basically just playing with my cell phone. You know, trying to get content that way. Content that I actually never released because it was never edited. After we left the stadium, and you can see Mawa right in front of me. I was basically a rookie YouTuber walking behind him, just grabbing scenes here and there. You know, I didn't know what I was doing, you know, but I was happy Mawa was there because I could see him in action. So I'm trying to capture as much as I can uh, of this uh, mere madness happening here. It's, uh, it's hard to describe. So after the game, is when Mawa actually was supposed to meet with Emily. She actually met us there in this neighborhood not too far from Laureles in Medellin, Colombia. And from there, we walked with her, we took a taxi and we went to Poblado. So from Poblado is where we met Aaron, you know. Aaron met us and we had dinner in this gorgeous bar. You know, Medellin is an amazing city and this place was just a delicious cocktail. We had a great time. So I have, as I'm vlogging around, you know, I spoke to Mawa and this is some of the things that I filmed when I was there. So when we went to Colombia, I was with Emily and my friend, my friend Aaron Dante. Ivan called. Hey boys, where are you? We said, hey, we are in Colombia chilling. Uh, look, this is, uh, this is Aaron, this is me, and this is my friend Emily. Actually, you know what happened? That guy booked a flight from Ecuador. He was in Ecuador. He booked a flight immediately and came to Colombia. He booked, he booked a flight, flight immediately, immediately and, and came, came to, to Colombia. So yeah, as you, you, you see it, you know, I, I had a great time with Mawa and Aaron and Emily. So this is where the evening took a turn. As you heard from Mawa himself, he's been trying to hook up with this girl for a while. I had known her for a long time, probably, you can say, four or five years. She was not my girlfriend. But it was a lady who was very close to me that I always tried, you know? When me and Aaron and Emily, we were together, okay? Ivan joined us another day, okay? And Ivan was, Emily, can you be my video editor? This guy comes forcefully, forcing himself on a girl that even he has, just because I've introduced him, hey, 
This is Emily, my friend. So you know what I did? I said, goodbye, Emily. I don't want to fight my friendship with this guy called uh, uh, Ivan. You, Emily, you can, you, you can decide if you want to deal with him. If I am lying, Aaron Dante is there to ask. Because every story I'm telling you, there is a witness. Even ask Aaron Dante. As you heard from Mawa himself, he's been trying to hook up with this girl for a while. Why? Because for Mawa, no does not mean no. I don't know how many times a woman has to tell him no for him to understand. I don't think his brain can process no. Because, Mawa, you claim that I can only talk to women after you because you're apparently some kind of pimp. You're apparently some kind of player and you have the game figured out. But tell you what, Mawa, for men who really have options, when a woman tells them no once, they move on. They don't get to beg for years like you have been doing. So the fact that you feel like you kept on trying, there's no keep on trying. If a woman is interested in you, you know it. You don't have to keep pushing her. You don't have to make her feel uncomfortable. Every time she's around and keep begging for sex, you don't do that. Real men don't beg. They don't. So as much as you think you're a player, you're not, bro. People pay attention to you because they have a YouTube channel with a pretty huge following. It does not make you a player. You don't know how to assess a situation. You don't understand when a girl is just not interested. It creates friction. It creates issues. And you're trying to put it on me. You're trying to blame me for it. But bro, look at yourself, man. Stop trying to blame me for that kind of stuff. I have nothing to do with that. When we're having dinner, as you see, I'm recording. I'm trying to get my content. My channel is open, but I have absolutely no footage. In the midst of the conversation, I found out that Emily is a video editor. So she's showing me on her phone some of the clips that she has made. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I need a video editor. So when Emily went to the bathroom, I asked Mawa if it was okay for Emily to edit for me. He said, of course, no problem. Aaron was right there. And Aaron is my witness. Hey, let's 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 figure this out, you know. So Mawa allowed me to get Emily's number. So when Emily came back from the bathroom, I said, Emily, you know what? I need an editor. That's what your job is. Is it okay if I get your number and we can talk business? Emily said, Of course, no problem. She gave me her phone number. This happened right in front of Mawa. It was a purely business transaction. I have no reason to hit on Emily. For what, guys? Don't listen to Mawa. If you go to if you go to Colombia, you'll understand that there are many things people can fight about, but not about women. There are just too many of them. And for someone coming with a little bit of money, guys, you have options after options. Why would I jeopardize my friendship with Mawa for a female? For what? Why? Why in Colombia where there's nothing but women available around? Think about it for a second. He's trying to pay me as this desperate guy with no options, therefore I'm hitting on everybody, his sister. I'm surprised he didn't tell you guys I was hitting on his mother. Because it seems like he's trying to blame me for everything and trying to pay me as this thirsty guy. Mawa, why didn't you tell people I was trying to get with your mother? You just make things up. It's not cool, man. It's not cool. So what ended up happening, guys? Mawa, like he said, he told you guys himself, he kept on trying. He kept on trying to get with Emily. And Emily told him no. She was not interested in Mawa. Mawa cannot understand no. So he told Emily, if you don't want to sleep with me, you got to leave the table. He was so rude to her. He killed, I don't know how many years of friendship for sex. And Mawa and Emily have not spoken since. It has nothing to do with me. I am friends with Emily to this day. That's why when I watched Mawa's live, I said, Emily, please watch this. So when she watched the video that the clown has made, she made a statement. 
that um, she sent to me. So this is Emily, okay? This is the statement that, you know, she has made. We talk often, you know, she's a very good person. We actually shot a video together where I said thank you to her. I'm gonna read the statement that she wrote in English for you guys. So this is what she said. The truth is that I knew Mawa for a while and something happened that I didn't like at all. When we spoke, he insisted on marrying him. And one day when he was in Medellin, we met for dinner with his friends. And that day he insisted on me again. Then since I didn't want to accept, he simply told me to leave and pushed me away. I left, but that moment was really bad. I felt disrespected and I felt that his intentions were not good for me. This was something that damaged the friendship and I don't know if we were really friends. And that's just what I thought. Maybe behind that, Mawa had other not very good intentions. And I was thinking that we were friends. Since we did not speak again, and it was not a nice or good experience, I'm very sorry that was the way it ended. I like to surround myself with people with a good heart, good values, who really respect others. Guys, unfortunately, the way sex is easy in Colombia, many men go there and think that every Colombian girl is the same. If you want easy sex, you can get it. But not every Colombian woman is the same, you know? And I think as a man, as you age, you get to assess situations. And you know, this person is not this way, and this person is not that way. Friendship is extremely important. Why would you jeopardize a friendship like this for years, for just sex, that you can get from anybody else? Needless to say, Mawa was not very lucky on this trip. Because he thinks he's some kind of player. He thinks he's some kind of, you know, cool guy that every girl wants to sleep with him. But when he's told no, there's like some kind of, you know, short circuit in his brain. And he acts up. He gets very angry and he becomes aggressive. This is the theme with women and me and Mawa. And being around him, having a friend who behaves in this way, what do you do? What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to just watch it? Or you're supposed to tell your friend, this is not okay. I have sisters. I have a mom. These are females that need protection. So I'm sorry. As a male, as a brother, as a friend, that instinct kicks in. So when I see a predatory behavior, I say something. And it was sad to me to see Emily leave in tears. You know? Mawa, you need to really watch the way you talk to women. I don't know, maybe in Africa you get away with that. But that type of behavior is not okay. You get away with that in Colombia as well. Nobody has pressed charges against you for sexual harassment. You display it on TV sometimes. And what you find in me is someone who tells you the truth and you don't like that. That's why, even on the latest live that he has done, guys, Mawa has invited people to go on my channel and basically write resurrected, indicating that he resurrected my channel. I'm doing just fine without him. Since Mawa has left, I have doubled the number of subscribers when he left my house. I'm doing just fine without him. And I will address what I call the Mawa curse on channels so that you also watching, thinking about collaborating with him, you are aware of what you're actually getting yourself into. I am confident now into addressing this. That's why I'm doing it on my channel. Last year, I didn't think I was able to face someone with so many subscribers. But I'm okay with the insults. I'm okay with the attacks. Most of you guys come into my channel to do that, don't even know me, and will be totally devastated if Mawa was to behave like that towards your sister, your mom, or your daughters. It is not okay. A woman has the right to say no. This has been the theme with every woman he mentions that I so somewhat took from him. No, it's just because these women, no, I'm not going to attack them. I'm not aggressive like he is. I don't talk trash like he does. And I don't think I'm entitled like he thinks he is, simply because he has followers. This is not an okay behavior. So after Emily left, we, you know, we left the restaurant. Myself, Mawa, and Aaron. 
And and then I told him, I went, man, I, I, I don't think you handled this situation the right way. Why would you talk to her like this? And Mawa didn't like my comments. So he got very upset. He said, how dare you asking me this? She's my blah, 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 blah. And me and Mawa got into it. We yelled at each other in the middle of Poblado. Back and forth. And if it wasn't for Aaron, my friendship with Mawa would have ended on that day. Because he was very upset with me, asking him questions about the way he treated Emily. And at the same time, I was very, very angry about the way he treated that girl. You know, I think that women have a right to say no. And I think that as a man, no means no. And most guys understand that. Mawa doesn't. He just, he doesn't. He doesn't get no. He feels like he has to keep on pushing. You don't need years to keep on trying to get with a woman. If she's into you, she's into you. If she's not, she's not. Move on. As you see, even with these attacks towards me, Mao is displaying his inability in processing no. So something ends and he just keeps coming and coming and coming. So guys, in this video, I've addressed the lie regarding Mawa's entry into the United States for the second time to come and stay at my place. He lied to you guys about that. I've addressed D. I have more on D, but this is not to come at D. This is not an attack towards D. So I'm going to stop myself there. But if compelled, I have, I have more receipts. But this is what I'm going to stop for now regarding D because there's no reason to go further because D has done nothing wrong to me. And D... I love your editing style, I always have. Watching D is the reason why I do voiceovers. I had many arguments with Mawa about editing styles. This is something that I've learned is important in some scenes and by watching D. Also guys, regarding D, I wanna let you know, how would you feel having a popular brother like Mawa who makes all this money, but you're not comfortable asking him for money. You have to ask this random guy on the internet that you've never met. She told me her brother would be very upset if he found out. Now, I don't know. I've never told Mawa that I've let his, mom, his sister borrow money. He said I gave her money. I didn't. I let her borrow money and she paid me back. Mawa, don't turn stories around. You were not there when I gave her that money. She paid me back on time. So, they thank you for being honest. So, let's put this, let's put this to rest. Let's just put this to rest, man. There's no need to go back into things that have been handled, it's done. She borrowed, she paid back, it's over with. You know, we were friends, but I understand why we're no friends anymore, and it's okay. I'm fine, I'm sure you're fine. And we've addressed Emily. He wants to make it seem like I've been looking for all these girls, trying to sleep with them. That is not the case. Emily's a friend of mine. Emily helped my channel. If it wasn't for Emily, I eventually would have not started when it did. That's why I filmed the video with her that I have. I'm thankful to Emily, and I'm thankful to Mawa because I met her through him. But let's not get the story twisted. Let's not make it seem something else than it is. Mawa, you know, it's okay to have female friends without trying to sleep with them, man. It's okay to be friends with attractive women. You don't have to try to sleep with every girl that's hot, or you think is hot. No girl owes you sex, you know? If a girl is not interested in you, just take it. Move on. It's okay. You know, your game is pretty weak. I don't know how you pulled your current girl. But Rocio, if you're watching this, be careful. You see what I have to do now to defend myself? If you ever break up with Mawa, everything you have told him will be public. He doesn't understand privacy. He doesn't understand anybody else but himself. I don't know what you have done to tame this guy because this is the most tamed I've seen him. In a very long time but don't get it twisted his true colors will come out sooner or later like he said before he's a polygamist and once this baby comes i hope that you guys can mix your cultural differences together and make things work but if it doesn't just be careful because mawa does not care what goes online he will say anything and everything and his minions who are here right now watching this video and gonna go in my comments and talk smack. They don't care about the evidence I put out. They just wanna defend him no matter what. Remember, K 
keep your evidence tight because you're dealing with a guy who is very popular on YouTube and he will not hesitate to use his fame to come after you. It doesn't matter. You won't be the first one. I'm not the first one. I just prepared myself because I knew one day he would come after me. So I also want to add that I've observed Mawa for a while. By the time we became friends, it's someone I was watching for a bit. And I knew one way he ends his friendships is by attacking people on the internet. I feel like if this thing explodes, he's going to um, attack me on YouTube. So I'm trying to prepare myself in case I have to fight him. So yeah. Mao is a bully. He's a clown and he's a bully. And you know, his handicap makes people, you know, feel sorry for him. You look at him, you say, well, he's missing an eye. You know, he comes from very humble beginnings. We all feel sympathetic for his situation. But I want to tell you guys, Maui is a very mean person. There's a very dark side of him that he's hiding behind the mask that you guys are seeing. And it's unfortunate because it doesn't have to be like that. Why ask? Think about it. Half a million people, he goes live and tells people, go on Ivan's channel and do that. Go write this, go do that, go unfollow. This is, this is bullying. This is cyberbullying. And he can get away with it because he's not in the United States. You know, he has freedom of speech. But there's the limit between freedom of speech and straight up verbal attack and assault. And that's what he's doing. But this whole situation was started by him. I never wanted to do this. I've been quiet, but I was prepared because I know the clown is always coming back for new tricks. Folks, be careful with YouTubers. Some of them will do anything for views. Some of them will do anything for clicks, regardless. And Mawa is one of them. That's why he stirred up this drama, for views and clicks. Now, some of you might feel like, oh, well, Ivan, you're getting views and clicks as well. I never wanted this. I never wanted this. I have a lot of content that I'm working on and things that I'd rather be doing. And this is bad for business. Mawa, creating this kind of drama is part of the reason why brands don't want to associate with you. Your whole channel is built around it. My advice to you, if one day you will listen, stop it and focus on something more positive. Focus on being a good person. Look up to what Wodemaya is doing. You know, there's a reason why he gets invited to places that you never will. There's a reason why he's not responding to you. Wodemaya is a gentleman. Wodemaya does a lot. You never hear those kind of words come out of Wodemaya's mouth. And I don't know why you keep attacking him, but I'm so thankful that I met Wodemaya. I'm thankful for the advice and I'm thankful for everything he's done for me. And I really wish you would keep his name out of your mouth. You're not even in the same league. So guys, this is it for now. The next video, we will address Priya. We will also address the Polish girl. Because there's some footage that I have that I've never released. When, when we went to the airport to pick her up, Mawa has released his version. I haven't released mine. So what really happened when the Polish girl came home? Stay tuned on the next video. Thank you for watching. How old were you? 16. <sighs> Almost 17, yeah. <laughs>